All right, so I just got back from the uh, War Museum, and yeah, I did pick up some stuff. I'll go quick, oh, relatively quickly. I'm not going to drive you up the tree showing you all the stuff. Um, there was a few models, uh, yeah, they had some wing nut ones there. The only uh, one that I thought was pseudo-affordable, it was $90. It was a, um, a nine-decker uh, three, and I was like, well, I'm not, I'm not, I'm sorry, but I don't want to pay um, uh, $90 for uh, a monoplane. Um, and the other ones were $200 for the uh, the wingnut ones. I know they're not made anymore and, and whatever, I, but tough. Um, and I unfortunately did not find uh, a Halberstadt uh, D5. I, I, I was, you know, I, you know what, I was somewhat disappointed in some ways about it. I'll go through them here. And the first guy ripped me off, the little bastard. Uh, I didn't deal with it afterwards, but it was kind of like, um, if you look at the prices, I shouldn't have been paying that. But I was like, you know what, just leave it. I mean... Whatever. In the long run, it worked out, I think. So stop. Now, here I am already giving it more negative energy. Now, this one I had not seen before. So this is an RE. Yeah, lo most of the ones I picked up are 172s. This is just the way it is. I mean, what can I do, man? Uh, so that looks an awful lot like the, uh, the BE2. Um, the front engine just looks a lot, a lot different. Hold on. I do have one, but uh, you see here, it looks... That's a, this one I picked up a while, like not <clears throat> not today, but you can see what I mean? It's got similar look, but we'll see. Anyways, I've never heard of that one before, so I was like, okay, let's snag that puppy. Um, so, yeah, oh, sorry, there we go, that's the first one. Uh, here's an, um, a sop with pup. That looks pretty mellow uh, to do yet again. Um, and these are, I did pick up a few, in, uh, sorry, I did pick up a few intro war, uh, war ones, but I was like, ah, it doesn't matter, they look uh, good enough to me, like, Still, whatever, and uh, another check. Uh, yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, model companies from there. Another interwar one, I think. I'm pretty darn sure. Yep. Um, yeah. See, this is two dollar. I think I picked up two dollar. It doesn't matter. I'm whining about it again, for Christ's sakes. Um, a sop with tri uh, triplane that looks nice. Um, yet I haven't even looked in the boxes. It could be missing half the stuff, for God's sakes. Um, uh, a new port. 17. Um, interesting. Comes with like a little pilot, eh? I love seeing. Oh, these ones are. Oh, I was actually. I was pretty damn happy to find this one. The Halberstadt uh, C1. I was really, really happy because I know I'm pretty darn sure I can look it up on my sheets, but I'm pretty darn sure that uh, uh, the Austro Hungarians used one. Excuse me. So that would be nice because I'd like to, you know, I want to do every nation kind of thing. Here's another interwar one. I think it's the exact same thing I got over there at the other one, but I was like, ah, I just, there's something about these, these cool pictures too. I, I like, I like the look of them. And, uh, a Hanover, I don't know, I've never heard of that. It's probably a, I'm assuming an interwar one. Maybe I'll check on, maybe I'm right. Like, it, I'm, I've got a list of all the planes that were ever used in World War One, so I can take a look. Finally got myself a nine-decker. Um, <clears throat> So yeah, that'll be that. Um, uh, and lots of the prices that you see on the whatever, I don't know if I actually, I don't know why in the world I picked up another DR1. Uh, I thought I'd, I thought I'd picked up a, a, one of the later ones, like a, a, a DR5 or a 7 or something, but uh, and which are biplanes, not the triplane, but uh, oh well. And a gypsy moth. I think they were they these were quite often used as trainers from what I've heard, but uh, that looked an interesting one. There was one model I was going to pick up. You should have saw the, the front part of the... Um, uh, I thought it was a camera, some weird camera mount. It looked like a really... And the guy goes, no, oh, that's the machine gun thing. But uh, he said, don't get it. The kit sucks. And I said, okay, thanks. Uh, I got another monoplane. That looks interesting. Um, so I'll be doing, you know, like I said, a lot of one to seventy twos or whatever. I'm just grabbing when I can't. Oh, you're about to see something I found rather interesting. So as you can see, another entry war or whatever. But um, whatever. This uh, I've been. T I discussed this with Meandry Mike a while back ago. I had no idea what the heck a vacuum form uh, model is. Well, you know what? We're gonna open her up so you can see what I mean. See what it is. Um, so what? It, or did I have another vacuum form kicking around? I probably do, but oh well. Hold on. I don't have. Any oyster shuckers or the the stabby tweezers? So I've got the. I just got nails. So you'll see what vacuum form is because I was like, should I buy this, guys? Uh, uh, to the guy says, uh, oh yeah, he says what it means, and I knew what the process is, but I didn't understand what 
So it is a complete kit. Okay, I see what they did here. If you think I care about whatever, give me a break. This is not, I'm not in collector's items crap. So, the guy said, there you go. So it's, I'll have to cut out the, I'll have to cut it out myself. That's what he said. You just got to be careful and um, you cut the, the pieces out yourself. So that's what it is. I've never done this. It'll be fascinating. So, uh, because they had a ton of these at this hobby center, the one that Rob showed me. And I was like, well, I don't, I'm not picking any of them up because uh, afterwards I was like, I don't know what the hell you need. Do you need the machine for it? This is the first one I saw that I picked, uh, wanted to pick up. And yeah, yet again, it's an intro warrant. Yeah, it looks a lot like those BE2s or whatever, or the F2B, which you're about to see again. Um, uh, this is a 1 to 72. Look at the size of the box. That's crazy. What is going on here? Um, oops. So we'll see. That can't. That's not one to seventy-two. The size of that thing. There's no way that's one to seventy-two unless there's something I don't know about this plane. Yeah, I better. I better. Well, look. You know what? They know more than I do. The, for Christ's sake, the, the manufacturers. So this is a Rodin. I've never seen a Rodin 1 to 48. I obviously know they have them, but there's the, I've got this. I also have this as a 1 to 48 over, uh, I've got an Aurora version of this, uh, but oh boy, do I ever like the box of that Aurora. So I was like, mm. and Rodin's really interesting. I, uh, not all of them, but I like the way they, they tell you like specific pilot and, and so on and so forth and give you like a little history. I know for the very first one they did with the Albatross D1 uh, on the 172 scales. Um, and then I also picked up this sop with, and that's a 1 to 48 as well. And see what I mean? Be just beautiful artwork. And it's a sop with, I never even heard of this one, the one and a half strutter. So, oh, please. No, it doesn't look like it. Shoot. I was kind of <clears throat> hoping. I do want to get one of these planes that has the wings, the uh, the top wings, uh, slightly behind. Um, I can't remember what they're called, but uh, it's uh, to, you know, to allow the pilot to see better. So I'd love to see. Look how far. Oh, that's crazy, eh? And this one, I was kind of, I, yeah, I suspected, I suspected. Uh, I did pick it up anyways. It's a Hansa uh, Brandenburg um, uh, W29. It's a seaplane, obviously. And uh, uh, I know the SMS Wolf had a Hansa Brandenburg uh, seaplane on it, but I was like, it's probably the, the W12, uh, which is the biplane. And sure enough, oh my God, it's ever a freaky weird. Look at the tail. The hell is going on? It looks like it's upside. This yet again, things I'll have to learn. But uh, yeah, I went and checked my book, um, which came in. And if you look, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but right here is a plane. You know, try to, and I can barely just catch that there's our those struts or whatever between the wings. And I'm like, okay, so it's not that one. I was getting excited. I was like, oh my gosh, I got like. Excuse me. I could maybe um, I could do the uh, the seaplane from the uh, uh, the SMS Wolf, which would have been great. Uh, what else did I pick up? I p picked up some decals here. Just a smattering. They didn't have a ton. I was really surprised. And I will show you this on a side note of what happens when you leave a piece of paper uh, in. At least, at least I left a piece of paper in my backpack. So this used to be a picture of a Halberstadt D5, an Ottoman uh, with Ottoman. Um, uh, uh, markings and uh, uh, um, I think a spad. Uh, excuse me, I think that's what Harold Bosma thought it was. But look what's happened to it after it got s in the rain and um, in my backpack for several times. Impressive, but uh, I'm keeping. Look at this. Well, you can see there. There's the the, the Ottoman bits there. If you, if you can see. <laughs> Anyways, I'm like I'm keeping that. I'm gonna put that up somewhere. They also had some books. Uh, and uh, they also had the used bookstore as well, so I went to both. Um, the uh, used bookstore was not too bad. Uh, I didn't have a ton of stuff, but I did get a few things. And uh, the other place is a dollar each. I uh, can't, can't remember if I got uh, so I got this one. This is quite nice. This was I was really happy to get um, the Robert Graves uh, book. Uh, that was, I was like, wow, really, really happy to get that one. This one I paid a dollar for. This will be interesting. I, like I said, I haven't even looked at it. You know what was neat? Is the vendor. You should have saw it. It was hilarious. So I'm at there. I'm looking at all these books, and he can he's, he sees my shirt. And he sees the models in my hand. Next thing you know, all of a sudden, I see him. 
shifting books to reveal more and more World War I ones. Ha! Ah! Oh, I loved it. So there we go. That looks nice. That was really, well, I just thought it was really funny. And then, uh, Pil oh, it's just like, I really want to, uh, this, this I picked up at the uh, used bookstore, but uh, Pilgrimage, that's something I would like to do someday for sure. Uh, Great Battle series, this was, oh, Jesus, sorry. This is about, um, uh, when I took a look at it quickly from the used bookstore, it's got a lot to do with the, um, it seems, uh, strategy and tactics and whatnot, and a lot of the thinking going into, going into 1918. I went, okay, nice. This one I thought was interesting because it was called The Warlords, and we just saw that uh, a little while ago from when I picked up, but this is not, uh, it's got everyone in here. Holy Moses, I went, okay. Ludendorff, Patin, Hindenburg, Haig, Hamilton, Kamal, uh, Falkenhayn, Foch, everyone is in here. Man, I was like, okay, look at this, it's just nuts. One after the flip another. And I guess it goes later on, yeah, Eisenhower, my, my. So I guess it goes off into World War II land. Oh, I'll just I'll stick to whatever. Of course, I still need to learn from other people. Stop thinking that uh, world. You know, it's whatever. This one, yeah, I picked up uh, the Great War at Sea. Um, yet again at the used bookstore. Uh, Nineteen. This looks really darn good too. Tactics, training, and technology. I took a very super quickie look, and I was like, "Yep, you, you're going to come on home." And this one I picked up. It's a well, I picked this up for a dollar. It's um, you know. Every freaking, I guess, uh, Karpeka, Russia, pioneer, constructor, pilot, built Voisin lookalike in 1910. Cool. Done. There we go. Uh, yep, that's it for me, I think. And I hope you're having a great old time. And I'll, oh, that's it. See ya.